Hey there guys, it's Tina and I am back and it is time for a get ready with me video. It's a catch up video. We're going to talk, we're going to have fun, we're going to use some new products. I have quite a few products that I received in PR, some that I purchased myself and I wanted to just try them out on camera with you guys and I also wanted to talk about some of the gossip stuff that's been going on. And I'm going to show you clips of my outfit and like my night out with my classmates. So stay tuned for the, the end of the video for that. I'll include the clips then so you can see my full outfit and all that. But if you want to see me do this look, which I am using, the new Urban Decay Reloaded palette, then stay tuned and I will talk to you soon. Alright guys, so I am starting off naked. Yes, I am actually naked. I am freshly out the shower, but I'm not flashing you guys, so technically I am still being decent. But I wanted to film my first step of my get ready with me using my moisturizer. This is the Ole Henriksen Truth C Rush Brightening Gel Cream. I'm going to apply this all over my skin. I actually already started applying it and I said, hey, you know what? Include this step so they can see what you do. So I apply my moisturizer and I like to let it sit on my skin for 10 to 15 minutes because I have oily skin. I want it to sit on my skin and absorb and do all that good stuff for a long time so I'm not left with any greasy residue and this gel cream is actually really great for oily skin I find but I still like to allow it to sit on my skin and fully absorb so it doesn't interfere with the face makeup that we're going to apply later. I will also go in with my eye cream. This is from Junk Elephant. It is the C Tango Multivitamin Eye Cream. I also have the Banana Eye Cream from Olay Henriksen which is kind of the matching one to this moisturizer. But I like to wear that mostly at night and this one is a little bit drier feeling, if that makes sense. The one from Ole Henriksen is really hydrating so I reserve it for my nighttime routine. This one just sits a little better under makeup and it doesn't interfere with like my concealer or anything so I like to use this one when I'm going in with a full face of makeup. And while we're at it let's go in with a little lip balm. This is from by Beauty, it's their Agave Lip Balm. It's the twist up one. I don't necessarily like this lip balm. I'm just using it up because I have it. It is very stiff and I like stiff in some things but not in my <laughs> lip balm. It can, if your lips are chapped or like ready to split and you need hydration, don't even pull for this because the minute you try to apply this, it will split your lip because it's that stiff. Which if your lips are hydrated like mine are now, it's fine, but if you're working with chapped lips, this is not the most comfortable to apply at all. But I'm gonna allow all of this goodness to really absorb into my skin while I apply some clear nail polish to my nails, and I'll be back in about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, so we are back, and my skincare has had a chance to sink into my skin, and we're gonna go ahead and start out with brows. So I'm using my Sephora Beauty Amplifier Eye Primer for my brows. This has been discontinued, but they have repackaged it into a tube form with a doe foot applicator. I haven't tried that one out, so I don't know if it's the same formulation. I'm assuming it's the same or similar, so if you were interested in trying this primer out, which I have been really enjoying for my brows, you can go ahead and check out the new formulation. And I'm just going to work that through my brows so we have a nice canvas to start with. So we're gonna go ahead and fill in my brows and I'm going to use one of the new Urban Decay brow products that they released. This is the Brow Blade and I have two shades here. I am gonna go in with the darkest shade which is Dark Drapes. There is also Brunette Betty, but my brows are really dark as you can see so I'm gonna use Dark Drapes. They have a pencil side and then they have an ink stain side. I'm really not into the micro blade craze like I'm not on that train so we're just gonna wing it or not wing it because it's brows so just just work with me I'm going to outline my brows first and I have a full video showcasing these products that I, I shouldn't say I have a full video I have a demonstration that I filmed it ain't posted yet so I might just speed through this I'm just gonna outline my brows with the pencil side and like I said this is dark drapes which is the darkest shade they have in my brow oh let's zoom let's zoomy zoom is it hi 
how are you? I just outlined the shape of my brows. I don't have to fill in too much because my brows are pretty full, but I like to sharpen the shape and make it a little bit more defined. So I use a pencil for this. I know a lot of people think this is a little harsh, but it's what I like to do. So outline with the pencil and I'm gonna do the microblady thing with the start of my brows with the ink stain part. As I said, this is not my preferred thing to do. Honestly, truly. Um, I'm just not gonna do that because you know what? Let me not try to force it. What I would actually do is grab my flat top brush from, who is this from? Paula Dorf? Do they still make this brush? Is Paula Dorf still a brand? Are they still a thing? I don't know. Flat top brush and work the product through my brows so it distributes the product and kind of erases any harsh lines. Although I do like a bit of a harsh line, I'm not gonna lie. Especially right here, I like to make that really crisp. So we'll just blend that out. I'll go fill in the other one, I'll be back. All right, so my brows are filled in and I'm gonna grab my primer. This is my Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion. As for the brow pencil, I like it, but I don't prefer it over their regular brow beater pencil. This I prefer a lot more. I wear neutral brown and dark. Those I prefer a lot more over these ones, but I can see if somebody's into that microblade look or they like to do lines in their brows, I can see how that could be really handy for them. I just prefer their brow beater and my Benefit brow pencil this little guy here, which is the Precisely My Brow. I prefer those two pencils myself. Now I'm going to go in with some concealer. This is from, oops, ColourPop. This is the shade Deep Golden 60. I think they changed the shade number. I may be wrong, but I didn't see this anymore on their website. I think they expanded the shade range, changed something. I don't know what the hell they did but I don't know for sure what the conversion is. Can somebody tell me? Do you know? I am thinking it may be like dark 40 or something just based on the color selection now. Y'all tell me because I don't know. And I need to know because I actually do like this concealer for an eyeshadow base. It actually works pretty well and it sets down nicely and I don't even mind it under my eyes either so it's a pretty decent concealer it does darken up you can tell already it's darkening up but I don't know once you get a decent shade it's not a bad concealer and for the price I'm okay with it so y'all tell me what the correct shade is because I'm gonna need to probably repurchase that at some point I'm gonna just further blend that out with my elf makeup sponge just to set it in place a little bit. Now we're gonna use a new palette. This is the Naked Reloaded palette from Urban Decay. Yes, they redid their Naked palette. I really like the packaging. I think they did a good job with how sleek it is, but they still maintain the material texture to it. So it's a fabric texture with a little bit of a puffy feel and they no longer include the double-ended brush or uh, the original original came with a double-ended eyeliner and then they started including the double-ended brush instead but they no longer have that so it's a sleeker palette and it's cheaper too they also redesigned the pans so these four end ones so these last two on each end are larger than the rest of them and then the second to last and, and second one from the ends are also larger but not as large as these two and they are like transition blending shades and then the rest are their typical sizes. So it says here that the two larger ones are 0 0.049 ounces, which is just under the 0 0.05 of a regular small eyeshadow. Then you have the other two bigger ones are 0 0.045, and then the middle ones are 0 0.038. So I actually like that, and like I said, the price has dropped as well. So here's what the palette looks like. You can see all the shades here. And I am going to go in with the blending shade here, which is Blur. I'm going to start out with that. And 
I'm going to use a new brush. This is from Envision. It's the number two brush. So Envision is a new brand that was developed by Ripley. You may have heard me mention her a couple of times. She was friends with Stephanie Nicole here on YouTube. Stephanie used to use her for the dark skin swatches. And I don't know if you guys know Makeup by Aloe on Instagram. She's Alejandra and Throwback, can we talk about makeup history right now? She, I was following her for a while. She was a part of the original Scandalous crew. I don't know, <laughs> y'all remember Scandalous Cosmetics? Tell me you remember Scandalous Cosmetics. Okay, so y'all know Priscilla Ono, right? Yes, that name might sound familiar because she's now working with Fenty Beauty and Rihanna. She actually did, um, I forget which video that was that she was even an extra in for Rihanna and then since then she's been Rihanna's makeup artist. She's been working with her nonstop. She's one of the creatives that works with Fenty Beauty. She is working on their campaigns. You will see her post a lot about Fenty Beauty on her Instagram. But her original, original gig was Scandalous Cosmetics, or yes, yeah, Scandalous Cosmetics. She started it and Alejandra was a part of that. Do y'all, do y'all know this? So, Priscilla used to do makeup videos here on YouTube and I loved her. She would have the most intense colorful looks and she would promote the Scandalous Cosmetics base. She would be like, oh, I'm using my Scandalous Cosmetics eyeshadow base and everybody was like, what? So they sold at like a kiosk or one of those little, you know, little booths in the mall, you know, those standalone booths and they used to sell Scandalous Cosmetics there but you couldn't get it online. Like online shopping, online makeup websites weren't really a big thing then. So it was very difficult to get your hands on the products. But then the scandalous eyeshadow base was like a big thing because everybody was like, oh my God, it makes your eyeshadow so vivid. Let me go on blend. So blur, I'm blending in the crease with this brush. So the scandalous eyeshadow base was kind of the prequel to the P. Louise base that everybody's going crazy about now. Scandalous Cosmetics, their base was the thing before right it was like a really sticky white base and it would really intensify your colorful eyeshadows and Priscilla was known for the colorful eyeshadows so that's just some history on it so that's how I knew Alejandra I've been following her for a long time she does really beautiful colorful looks she blends like her blending is flawless right so then her and Ripley became friends so I'm using Bucked now from the palette which is the third shade this is a matte. It doesn't really look like a dry matte, doesn't feel like a dry matte. It's just a, like a creamy matte shade. I'm not getting too much kick up either with this. This is more like my skin tone with a little bit of a caramel tint to it. It's a little bit darker than the blur shade. So I just blended that into my crease and brow bone area. So Ripley and her developed their own brand. They became really good friends and they have three makeup brushes that they released. And this neon orange that you're seeing, that is more like a neon coral. It is beautiful. They have Envision 1, 2, and 3. The number 3 is more of a, like a blush, highlight kind of situation contour it's a larger brush but you can also use it so aloe does i call her aloe because that's what she goes by she will demonstrate the brushes on her instagram and she uses it even in her crease like this and it's really soft i don't know if these are natural hair they look synthetic but they're really soft oh my god right so they did this startup brand with these brushes so we have the blend and brush that has kind of a tapered pointed shape and the bristles are staggered so they're not just one length and then they have this smudger brush which is also like an eyeshadow layer brush like a to pack eyeshadow on so i she sent these to me and i'm really excited to try them out they also have like a brush soap that i have been enjoying quite a lot so i definitely wanted to showcase her brand and bigger up so y'all could go check them out the brushes are a little bit pricey i'll be honest but as a startup brand i can see why they needed to price it the way they did because they're doing this on their own they're just starting out but I can say that the brushes so far, I've been really enjoying them and they're really nice quality and they feel good on the skin, which is, is key for me. Like it has to feel good. So next I'm gonna go in with the Endgame shade, which is 
that dark brown in the middle. Let's see how this goes. We're gonna pop that on, ooh, okay, on the outer lid and blend it in. Now, this brush, I don't know if it is necessarily the brush you want to use to really pack on color. These brushes that they have are more of blend and diffusing brushes, and that would match with Alejandra's style. She is all about the blend. You see that just blended everything really easily. I didn't even do much and that blended, but sometimes you wanna actually pack color on. So I'm gonna go in with my Eddie Funkhauser brush. This is more of a packer blending brush. It will deposit tons of color, give you the pigmentation, and then also help you blend out. So if you want really diffused looks, I think these brushes are really good for that. And I think Aloe knew what she was doing when she created the style of brushes because that is just how she does her makeup. She's all into blown out looks. Now, so far, I really like the eyeshadows. They are typical Urban Decay quality in that they are not like extremely pigmented, overly pigmented. They're more of shadows that you build up to the intensity that you want. And they're soft and blendable. So, so far I like them. But I'm gonna go in with Burn first and then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Reputation, which these seem to be more bronzy shades with Reputation being a little bit, it looks a little bit more shimmery than Burn. Burn looks more satin and Reputation looks a lot more like metallic. But Urban Decay doesn't really do metallic metallic, but we're gonna go in, so I'm gonna put Burn down since it's on my finger already. I'm just gonna put it there and then put Reputation kind of in the center. They look very similar from what I can tell here, so it's not gonna be too much of a difference. Let me get a packing brush for this. Y'all know I love my Rite Aid brush, so I'm gonna pick up Burn first, which is that shimmery, it's almost like a coppery bronze because it has some orange to it. And this is just applying like mm, any satin, like shimmer eyeshadow would. It's not really giving me full on impact, which again, I think Urban Decay's eyeshadows are more of the everyday wearable, I'm not trying to be Instagram ready kind of situation. It's just wash of color and go. It doesn't have to be metallic, which I think the majority of people that aren't necessarily big on Instagram makeup prefer a subtle shimmer and definitely for more mature skin and more of a corporate environment as well. So I think though I wanna intensify this a bit so I'm gonna dampen my brush with my Smashbox primer water and then pick up Burn and go, oh, okay, you see now the intensity is there. That is actually pretty gorgeous. Ooh, now I'm gonna dampen a little bit more and grab Reputation. Hey, how do you guys feel about Urban Decay discontinuing the original Naked and redo, ah! I picked up too much, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh, okay, get away. Okay, there we go. Oh, this one, okay, Reputation, this one has more of a metallic finish, more of a dual chrome as well, because I can see gold peeking out. Okay, that is pretty, but, Urban Decay did away with the original Naked palette, which was actually, I don't know if you guys realize this, but it was actually a different formulation than the other Naked palettes. I think it, it contained, if I'm not incorrect, parabens, and the new formulation didn't. And they had redone their eyeshadow formula, I think a little, maybe twice since the original Naked palette. So it wasn't really the same formulation as the rest of their palettes. And let's be very honest here and very clear. Eyeshadows have come a long way since Naked came out the very first time. And Naked took the scene by storm, okay? Everybody was on board. Okay, I'm going back into the dark brown. And everybody was all crazy about the Naked palette. It was the original neutral palette. So. For those who want to talk shit about Urban Decay, I'm like, Urban Decay kind of started this for us, so give props to the veterans. It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to go back in with the Envision um, brush because this helps to blend. It really, oh my god, all right. Allo, Ripley, I see what y'all were, were going for because I literally did this and it blended that out like nothing. And my Eddie Funkhauser brush, I would need to do a little bit more like, oh, oh my god, you know, 
to really blend it out, but that was effortless. Okay, I, I am on board with this. For my highlight under the brow, I think I'm gonna go in with Bribe, which is this shade here, which is an ivory with a little touch of sheen, which I like for my under brow highlight. Okay, it doesn't look stark white, which I appreciate. It actually has a little bit of a golden sheen to it. I don't know if you can see that, but that actually works pretty well for the high point. So it gives the highlight, but it doesn't look stark. Okay, Urban Decay, I see I see what's going on. We're gonna pull back and do some face work. Um, For my primer, I'm gonna use a little bit of my Can't Stop, Won't Stop around my T-zone because we get really oily here. I actually really like this primer for this area. It does really work nicely. So you can get it at the drugstore, you can get it at Ulta, and you can use your coupon to get it a little, a little cheaper because I don't know if it's the cheapest thing. It might actually be like $7.99, but I think it's under $10 for sure. And it works really nicely. It came out with their Can't Stop, Won't Stop foundation, which I also actually did like quite a bit, so. Look at me putting it all over my skin. Okay, it's balling up a little bit. Okay, I didn't didn't expect that. Maybe it's with the... It, okay. Okay, come on now. I don't like that. It's brushing away though. Okay, you know what? Whatever. I'm going to put it also between my brows and a little bit in my forehead area. It's not balling up there, so I don't know why it balled up on my cheeks. Whatever. All right. Let that sit for a little bit. The foundation I'm actually going to use says you don't need a primer, but here I am. I am going to use a primer anyway because that's how I live my life. So the foundation I'm using is the Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation from Hourglass. I'd mentioned in one of my haul videos, I think it was my January haul video, that I'd reached out to the brand to see if I could, you know, just get 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 a little taste of, of this of the foundation because I had gotten samples from Sephora because I'm living the sample life, and they actually sent me two of the shades. So I have Natural Amber and Golden Amber, and Natural Amber is a great shade match for me, right? What do you think? I have been wearing this foundation. I actually, again, have like, I filmed, I filmed a demo and I have the review upcoming, but I've been wearing this foundation to test it out with different primers, different ways to wear it, different ways to apply it, and it's, I'm gonna have a review for you guys, but I'll give you a, a, a little sneak sneak. I actually do like it, but I like it a specific way because it's not necessarily a foolproof foundation, but I do like the finish of it and I'm willing to work with it kind of the way that I had to work with Fenty because I like how it looks on my skin. So I'm willing to do a little bit extra to make sure that it jives with my skin because of the finish, the color match, everything. So that is a pretty good color match. What do you guys think? And I don't even need a lot of it. Like this was a pump. A little does go a long way for me at least. And I do have hyperpigmentation, but I don't have a problem with some of that showing through. I don't like the look of full coverage foundation. I prefer my skin to look like skin, so I don't have a problem with a little bit of my flaws showing through. I'll just blend out a little bit of that with my, what is this? The Artiste brush. It looks nice. Now for concealer, let's grab a concealer. The one that I picked up most recently is from Milani. It's the Conceal and Perfect Longwear Concealer. The shade that I have is 160 Warm Tan. The thing is, the number on the bottom of this, if you go on the website, it doesn't match up. Like their number, I don't know what is going on with their number system. It's just weird how they have it, but this is 160, so maybe it's 60. Maybe it's warm tan, whatever it is, it's the shade I am using. And you know what, let me let that sit for a little bit and set into my skin while we set our brows. I set our brows in place. This is on its last legs. It is my Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. Now let's blend out the concealer. This concealer is actually pretty nice. It has really nice coverage. It's not dry at all. And this is a pretty decent shade match for me. It's warm tan, so it has, I guess, some warmth to it, which would mean what? 
golden undertones, like yellow, I, I suppose. But it blends out really nicely on my skin. I usually go in with a brush too, just to make sure. And it feels, as it dries down, you can feel it drying down. It gets a little bit thicker and stiffer. So you kind of have to work quickly, but not too quickly. I like to have it sit a little bit and then blend it out. But I do like the coverage of this and how it makes my under eyes look. As with any concealer under my eyes, it creases. So I do need to set it down with powder, which we'll just do that right now. So I'm grabbing my La Paris Translucent Setting Powder. This is Translucent 2. This is, what is it called? The Cellular Treatment Powder. I love this powder. I am still on my travel size, guys. This powder has lasted me forever, even though it was like $100. So they have like a full pot, like a big pot, and then they have the travel size as a bonus, and I'm still using the travel size. So that goes to show you a little goes a long way, and it really looks great on the skin. All right, next up, I'm gonna use Angel Fire for the inner tear duct highlight. Not too much. This is like one of those glitter shades. Maybe I need to use it damp. This is just a Delium Tools Golden Triangle 781 crease brush. That looks pretty, but I'm gonna dampen my brush just a little bit again. If you wanna intensify shimmer shades, like a little touch of a primer, water, or even like Fix Plus from MAC, I personally love the Smashbox Primer Water. That helps to intensify shimmer and really make it look metallic. I like that. This doesn't look too stark on my inner tear duct with my darker complexion. So, okay, I really like that a lot. Let me actually come in for this one. I'm using the Exhibitionist from CoverGirl. This was sent to me. They sent me the waterproof one and the regular one, but this has an hourglass shape. And it reminds me of the Too Faced Better Than Sex. And I know that a lot of companies have been trying to mimic that Too Faced Better Than Sex since it came out because it just is that good and I love it. L'Oreal has the Lash Paradise which I like but it's not, to me, it's not Too Faced Better Than Sex. However, CoverGirl, CoverGirl about snapped necks with this one. This is so good. I mean, look at that, right? This is just, like I said, this is not the waterproof one. But look at that, okay? And this is one coat, like I'm just going back and forth and I like to build my lashes up. I'm going to apply false eyelashes but I'm gonna apply a really tame pair. So I really wanna build my natural lashes up first. It separates, it builds. Look at the volume on this, all right? And it's really black as well. So cover girl, all right. I will definitely repurchase this when I run out to supplement my Too Faced addiction because Too Faced, it's $24 for that mascara. The CoverGirl one, it can't be more than eight or $9 because CoverGirl's mascaras aren't that expensive. And I started out with the orange tube of CoverGirl mascara. That was my jam. And now they're cruelty free. They've rebranded, they've done, okay, I got a little smudge. Don't worry about it. They've rebranded, they went cruelty free, they're doing a lot, and I am here for it because this mascara is everything. I mean, guys, look, can you stand this right now? And I just went back in and I'm applying another coat. And it's not clumping or anything, and even if it clumps, I don't mind separating. And the brush is really comfortable, it's not spiky or anything, it has those nylon bristles. Are you? Are you? Can you? Do you? Hello. We're, we're, we're here for it, right? Even though I was attacked right here, I will forgive them. Let that dry and clean that up because this result is fantastic, right? For my lashes, I think I'm gonna grab one of these. These are the Foam Mink Wispies from Ardell. I really like the lash band on these. It's really thin and it's lightweight. So I'm gonna clip off like just one bunch and then prep these to apply to my lashes. Now, can we talk about drama a little bit while we apply these lashes? What is going on with Jussie Smollett? Like, he got indicted. What, how many felonies was it? 16 or something crazy like that? It's in the teens, I know that much. What? First of all, what is going on? So he became a trending topic on Twitter after there was an alleged assault on him that was racially and homophobically, is that a word? Whatever, it had 
overtones of homophobia and racism because there was a noose involved they called him a f word like they called him a n word like it was a whole thing right and he did all these interviews talking about how he fought them he went to subway to get a snack a sandwich because he was hungry and they attacked him and all this stuff and when i heard the story and i was like Something seems a little bit too contrived for me because how is it so perfect that they had a noose available They knew where he was enough to be like they t this was premeditated and they had bleach like Who are these people right come to find out his trainer? And his brother was his, his brother whatever it was his trainer for sure and then some other person who may be a relative of the trainer or just a friend I'm gonna set my foundation with the all-nighter powder from Urban Decay, the waterproof setting powder, so I can go swimming on the first date. No, I'm kidding. Um, I actually really like this powder. It um, it really mattifies the skin. It's like a blotting powder. But anyhow, he apparently hired them to do this ruse and he reported it to the police and he was getting a lot of press and support from celebrities and even from from other people on Twitter, like the regular Joe Schmo, like me and you, or Jane Schmain, whatever. We were out here, well, not me, because I just, something just didn't, you know when your spirit not text somebody and something just didn't feel right about it? So, here, come for find out, Alam that tell, he did this whole thing on his own, he plotted it on his own, and I can tell you right now, I, it's alleged, but honestly, truly, I can't say I'm surprised, but anyhow, them indict him now, so there must be something to it. They indicted him on several charges of felony, um, false reporting, like a, a an assault, whatever. Anyway, one piece of thing. So I want to think about that. Like, I guess he was trying to get his to extend his 15 minutes of fame because he's known for Empire, but I don't know how Empire is doing. Like, I watched the first season and I was done after that, but um, apparently he's trying to like extend his fame and the way I did it like he's done interviews about the incident and the way he spoke about it like oh yo I'm a fi like he was really peacocking so that's why I felt it was staged and lo and behold it was well the, the allegations are that it was staged I'm just using my fly liner to cover over the line of my lashes these lashes feel so lightweight and comfortable that's what I need because I'm about to be out for the night so um what do you guys think like what do you how do you feel about that i am just i am i don't know like who does that like i feel some type of way that he's nilly vanilla in the whole situation where is the urban decay powder so um yeah what do you guys how do you feel about that like why would you do that i think he was trying to get more money or something like what is what is that about like come on dude and then what is going on with this Kardashian, Khloe Kardashian, Jordan Woods, who is Kylie Jenner's best friend, who is Khloe's baby sister, and almost like her daughter, because they had this relationship where Khloe was a maternal figure for Kylie. So I would almost feel like she was similar for Jordan as well, like that big sister vibe. Anyway, Jordan and Kylie are best friend. And next thing you hear, Jordan was cheating with Tristan Thompson who he is I believe he's in his 20s 25 ish and then Jordan is 21 Chloe is in her 30s like 32 33 34 35 I don't know she in her 30s and she that you she married already and she got you all of that and lo and behold she there with Tristan Thompson now who's a bas basketball player I think who knows it's an athlete because that's all them data athletes and rapper and all of them something here so no um jordan apparently kissed him or some people have said like she's been cheating all this time did i set my foundation yet i thought i did did i do that and not tell y'all what i no i don't oh yeah the all-nighter powder but i feel like my under eyes look a little light so i'm gonna go in with my charlotte tilbury powder just a little bit and my smashbox kabuki brush but yes, so next thing, beer excitement, and they like, the fans of the Kardashians and the Jenner have been ripping Jordan to shreds, calling her a homewrecker. Oh, she mashed up the people in family because Tristan and, and, and what's your name, Chloe have, have a daughter together. Oh my God, that baby is so cute, okay? 
when the baby name true there is no truth in that relationship because when chloe was pregnant like on the verge of giving birth tristan was out here making out with instagram hoes in the club so one piece of excitement and because of that she went into like an early labor i gotta be careful because i'm not wearing any underwear i'm wearing a shirt like i'm being decent right now on top but i am not wearing underwear and i you know what does it matter like why does it matter but anyway so um chloe is upset like they were really ripping into jordan and everybody had jordan out here looking like a homewrecker and i'm like hold up so didn't chloe kind of steal tristan from his baby mama or like his girlfriend and they were living together or something like that prior to and then she got breed fame and have the baby and while she was pregnant the same thing catch her and him, him a cheat panar and now him a cheat with chloe the what's your name the kylie friend and i understand that it can be like somebody close to you betrayed you so i understand her hurt but like they were going off on jordan calling her a homer called she mash up our family chloe even was tweeting about that and i'm like excuse me where is that energy for tristan who this is a serial cheater apparently this is not the first time it's happened to you now twice that is being publicized that we know of officially and he also sweetie has cheated with you on whoever he was with before so obviously he, he is out here slinging it left and right it's community dick at this point which he's 25 and he's a millionaire he's out here in his prime so if i'm honest i expect that from him and with alcohol and drugs and the lifestyle in la that's involved I expect that from Jordan as well. She's 21, like, you know what I'm saying? Chloe should know better. And for Chloe to really treat Jordan like that, for the whole Jenner and Kardashian family to really treat Jordan like that, I know it, I understand the problem, all right? But, like, they ripped her apart. So, Chloe's saying that she, um, she's the one that broke her family up. And I'm like, so where's Tristan? Tristan is obligated to you. Nobody else is obligated to you but Tristan. He's your baby father and are you him there with? Apparently they weren't even together. So if he's doing whatever, it's a whole vicious cycle. Okay, these Kardashians and Jenners are a hot mess. And that show you some money, don't buy your happiness because all this drama, I don't need any of that energy in my life. And, and what's her face? Jordan said it right. She's like, I don't need your situation what a piece of mix-up because she went on the red table talk with jada pinkhead smith who does like this sit down table talk which is actually nice it's on facebook i don't really watch it because i don't you know i don't kumbaya a lot so um but i watched that one i was like oh hello so i don't know like a lot of people are to blame i think it was just a toxic situation to begin with it should never have escalated to where it did and i hope that they can reconcile one that tristan and chloe can come to like you know a, a mutual agreement like they can be civil and raise their beautiful daughter because she is oh my god adorable i think she is probably the cutest one i've seen so far her and north from oh, oh that one that came have they've been the cutest ones so far for me as babies like just so cute but um i hope they can like come to a thing like listen the babies don't need to suffer okay and i hope that kylie and jordan can get back to a place where they can be friends again i know the loyalty part it's going to be a uh, questionable it's going to be hard to trust her or whatever but at the same time it's like y'all gonna make little buddy like some dick like come between y'all when it was community dick anyway but let me know what y'all think about that um let me go and fix up myself because i need to i need to get out of here so let me put my outfit on and then finish up i need to put blush on oh let me just put on my blush right now since we let me just do that while we're talking so let me know what you guys think um i am actually going out with my college my college class well they weren't even that much in my class but yeah my college classmates like the group i hung out with in college we haven't seen each other in 10 years and we finally got together like a month ago and hung out and now we're we're trying to do it more frequently because it's like there is no reason that a decade should pass and we haven't seen each other so we caught up and now we're going out to dinner and drinks i don't drink but i'm gonna be there i am available i need a highlighter do i want to wear a highlighter though like do i care 
do I care? All right, I don't care that much, but I'm gonna use the highlighter here from Juvia's Place. This is, which shade is this? It even tell y'all which one? Heroin Glow One. And I'm gonna use the, what is this? The Envision Three brush. I hate when people do this. I hate that so much. Like I tap stuff off, but I don't like knock the hell out of it. I just hate that sound so much. And there's some people that are so aggressive, they're like, I'm like, Lord Jesus, have mercy. Just take up a little of the product now you're not for take up nothing. I like it just tap just so you're not for take up enough. This highlighter is really pretty. So, okay, we're gonna put clothes on and then figure out lips and all of that mess. I'll be back. All right, guys, so my hair is did. Doesn't this look good with this dress? Do I look like Poison Ivy right now with the green and the, the reddish hair? Or is it more like Ariel the Mermaid? Or even Jessica Rabbit. No, it's, it's definitely Poison Ivy. It looks really good with this dress. So I'll show you the overall outfit and stuff. I'll include some clips. But... So this is a turtleneck, kind of midi length skin tight. Well, it's not really skin tight because it's not tight enough to be skin tight for me right now. But it's cold outside. And I'm worried about it being super tight. Plus I lost some weight. So here we are. But the earrings, I wanted to show you guys these earrings. I got these on my trip to Milan. So I went to see The Last Supper and my nails are such a mess. I'm growing them out. Okay, I'll, I'll discuss. But the earrings. So these are at the souvenir shop from The Last Supper. And aren't they cute? They have like a little artwork right here. And I thought this worked perfectly with this outfit, with my hair. Isn't it cute? So my nails. Um... In January, I said I wanted to try something new, new year, new me. For the lips, I'm going to do something new because this is just simpler to eat with. Um, this is from Sephora. It's shade number 10, which is called Yum Yum. And then I also have Backseat from Urban Decay. These are nudes. But um, what was I saying? Oh, I put on gel nails and I did like an extension thing. And I was trying to do the coffin shape, but not too long. And... That lasted a good month and I yeah I haven't worn extensions acrylics gels or any of that in the last almost 10 years I haven't worn fake nails and so that was a little bit of a step outside of my comfort zone I always do my nails myself and I just wanted to try something and uh, no so I'm growing my nails back, but now I have to recover because to get the gel nails off, which I forgot, they have to file it down. It's not like acrylic where you soak it off. So I should have gotten acrylic. I shouldn't have gotten gel if I wasn't going to keep it for a long time. So that was my bad. So now I have to recover because my nails are buffed down and I have to grow them out. But, you know, whatever. It's fine. It, it, it's whatever. I also want to try box braids so if you know someone in new york and i'll travel for it that does really good box braids let me know send me their info all that stuff link me on instagram wherever i want to try box braids but because my hair is that mix with indian and and black i don't have like the texture to really hold braids so my hair usually gets ripped to shreds and my edges are like pulled out so i'm scared but I've never done box braids and I want to try it. But I want like jumbo box braids, like the ones that Janet Jackson wore in Poetic Justice. Those are so cute. So, no, I think I think this, the number 10 will do. And I'll just go over it with a little bit of my Sugar Cane Lip Gloss from Laura Mercier. Uh-huh. I think that's good. On the lower lashes, let's just do mascara. I'm going to do a little liner. Nothing, I'm not going to put shadow down there because it irritates my eyes a bit. And I really don't even want to put liner because I'm a little bit nervous that my liner is the thing that has been irritating my eyes when I wear eyeshadow. So my eyes have been getting really red and watery and I don't know what it is and I feel like... Because right now they feel really comfortable and really good. But as soon as I put liner on, they're going to start burning. So I'm going to use this one from LA Girl. It's the Glide Gel Liner and it's just the black one. So yeah. This is nice, right? Okay. Um, yeah, this looks really cute, but I'll show you clips of my outfit and stuff so you can see what the whole thing looks like. But like I said, this is from Rent the Runway. I'm just cleaning up some of that mascara, but it can be a little bit messy under my eyes. I think this looks really nice so far. I like everything that I have going on, but yeah, 
here is the get ready with me as usual i'm gonna list all the products down below in the description box along with links on where you can pick them up and all that good stuff those links happen to be affiliate links which means i will get a small sales commission if you shop through those links and also a few of a lot most of a lot of these products were sent to me for consideration through pr so they were sent to me for free but there's no obligation to test them try them show them or when it, whatever i just wanted to try them out for you guys and showcase some new products and I will also leave links to my Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat where you should be definitely following me along. And I'm going to be posting on Snapchat and, and Instagram stories like my night out so you'll see that. But I'll also include some clips at the end of this so you can see what my classmates look like and see what we get up into. But yeah, I really like how this turned out. It's simple. It's easy. The eyeshadows were really easy to work with. So I think the palette is a nice, simple everyday palette like for corporate America if you're just looking for simple looks I'll do a full review I'll do swatches and all that stuff but I just wanted to try it out on camera with you guys it's a mix of warmer tones and more neutral tones too so you get that mix but I really like it so far so with that being said I'll talk to you guys soon bye